This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by Video Guys, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for over 25 years. And by Boris FX, the leading developer of visual effects plugins, titling, motion tracking, and workflow tools for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. And by Assimilate Inc., makers of Scratch, the number one choice of professionals for complete dailies and larger than HD finishing workflows. Scratch, amazingly creative, incredibly fast. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And one thing I love about being part of the Avid Editors of Facebook page is that there's always some great questions that come up, and questions that in a lot of cases I might think is common sense, but it's always interesting to see what new users to Media Composer think about you know, what I consider to be a common task, whether it's importing, whether it's even capturing effects work, or in this case, exporting. Exporting for me, I've sort of been through the wide range of exporting way, way, way from way back in the days as exporting as QuickTime files all the way up to exporting now as MXF files. And in this lesson, I want to show you my workflow for exporting from Media Composer, why I use it, and some tips and tricks to get the best possible quality you can out of approval files or even social media files that you'll be sending to your clients. All right, so as you can see, we are in Avid Media Composer here. And I am working on the most current version as of this recording, which is the public beta of the Catalina version of Avid Media Composer. I believe that's 2020.2. Uh, so things might look a little bit different based on the platform you're on, also based on when you are watching this lesson. Now, one thing that I want to point out in this lesson before we get rolling is that I'm not here in this lesson to tell you what I think is the best way to set up your timeline, whether it's you like to mix down your entire timeline before you output or you know anything like that. That is really a personal preference. I'm not one that normally mixes stuff down only because I always have clients coming back to me at you know the 11th hour wanting to make changes. So I don't like getting into mix downs because then I have to remix down certain segments. And for me, that's just really too much that I want to deal with. Obviously your workflow up to the point where you're going to output, obviously that's your workflow. What I want to show you in this lesson is why I like to export as MXF files. Now, I'm also incorporating an aspect of Adobe's Media Encoder into this lesson. Now, it's actually loaded in the background, and if you know anything about Media Encoder, you know that it has to load up plugins when it's launching, and I have like 2,000 plugins uh, on this system, so it takes a while. So it might very well pop to the foreground. If it does, we'll just push it back into the background until we are ready to work with it. All right. So I have a, what we'll call it, just a simulated timeline here, just a bunch of clips with some dissolves in here. And what I have also done is put a simulated 5-1 track in here. Okay, you can see we've got left, right, center, sub, left surround, right surround. And normally what you would do if you're outputting for broadcast television is you'd have a stereo left and stereo right on 7 and 8. Now I'm just going to leave that out for right now because the concept of what we're doing really doesn't change. Uh, based on how many output uh, channels you have, basically how many out, uh, audio output channels you have. All right, so the first thing I want to do, Command, Option, and Equal Sign, Control, Alt, and Equal Sign for all my Windows friends. I'm going to come over to the User section. I want to come down to the Export Options. You can see there's a whole bunch of them when you create a new user. So what I'm going to do is just select this blank one here. I'm going to then select everything else and delete everything else. I'm just going to essentially give myself a clean slate. That is normally how I roll inside a Media Composer. I normally, when it comes to export settings, I'll have just the standard one. And then I start creating my own as I go. All right. Now, how you output you know, the actual process of opening will vary slightly based on how you have things set up in your timeline. And what I'm going to do here, just for kicks to get us rolling here, is I'm going to turn on mask margin. So I'm going to come down to target mask. I'm going to turn on the black mask. Now keep in mind, if you don't know much about mask margins, don't worry. I actually did a tutorial dedicated to it that I will put a link to in the show notes. Uh, so if you need to understand how they work, you'll be able to see how you can get in and work with them. However, mask margins do actually come into play when you are outputting. They're a great way to get in and to quickly do a mask like I've just done across your entire image. All right. And what I'm now going to do is just assume for argument's sake that I am going to select the entire timeline. I'm going to hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. And for me, this is just kind of a force of habit that I've done from way back in the day when I output. Normally, I'm outputting the entire timeline. So by doing this, I'm now going to right click and I'm going to navigate down to export. 
Now by default, I'm on that untitled export option. So what I'm going to do is simply click on options and you'll see in here we do have a few options for outputting. QuickTime is not one of them. We do have the option to get in and output things like audio, graphics, you know, JPEGs, TIFF targas, uh, Avid log exchanges. We also have the ability to get in and export DPX sequences, open EXR sequences, if we're working in larger than HD. Now keep in mind, we do have the ability to also export as actual media, video and audio media in larger than HD that I'll talk about in just a second. Now for me, how I normally export is with MXF OP1A, not the legacy MXF OP1A. Now, once I select that, let's just talk about what's going on in the upper right hand corner first. All right, got a few options in here. Use marks. Well, since I marked the in and out point in my timeline that I want to use, I'm going to select use marks. I also have use selected tracks. Obviously, whatever tracks I have selected is the tracks that will be outputted. Is it outputted or output? I think it's just output. All right, now you'll see that I can include inactive audio tracks, which in this case, I don't have any inactive audio tracks. All my tracks are active, so that's fine. I'll deselect that. Now here's the one that comes into play when we're talking about mask margins. Mask margins technically don't exist. They're not actual effects. They're not real pieces of media. It's just something that Media Composer lays over your timeline that you can utilize to reframe the image. However, you do have the ability to output with mask margins if you want to by simply selecting that right here. A great way to add a quote unquote effect without really adding an effect. Now, the only thing that's important to keep in mind with this is that if you have a slate at the top of your timeline, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's formatted for in this case, 2.39 to one, the aspect ratio, so that it doesn't actually get cropped off by the mask margin. I've made that mistake a couple times, all right? And last but certainly not least, render unrendered effects. Well, if I haven't rendered the effects, chances are I don't want them rendered, so I'm just going to leave that deselected. Now, the next big question, the big one, what video compression do you use? Well, in most cases, I'm sticking with the compression that my timeline is currently already set at, which in my case is DNX HD 175. Now, for the most part in here, if you're familiar with Media Composer and how it works as far as the codecs you can choose from, you'll know I'm just going to stick with 1080i and 2398. For 1080i, you're really going to be dealing with DNX 145 and DNX 220. Inside of a 2398 timeline, you'll be dealing, now this is HD, remember, you'll be dealing with 115 and 175. However, you do have a whole ton of other options in here, including DNX HR, DNX uncompressed, as well as JPEG 2000. You'll see you even have Panasonic AVC Long Got, but most importantly, if I keep scrolling down all the way to the bottom, a lot of people want to export XD cam. And this is where you'll do it. In most cases, places ask for XD cam 50, HD 50 megabits per second, which is right here. So we could save this as its own preset. So if I was going to select that, we'll select stereo. I'm going to save as, we'll just call this XD cam HD. I'll say, okay, it's right there. Let's make sure we actually cancel out first. I've noticed that's a little bit of a bug because you'll notice that if I go back here, that it's actually right there. So what you actually have to do temporarily is actually exit out and then right click again and go back to export and now it will be there as an option. What I'm gonna do is actually just come back into the options because I'm gonna switch this back to what we were working with before, DNX HD 175. Now, last but certainly not least, audio. How do you wanna output your audio? 48 kilohertz because that's what I'm working at. 24 bit, tur totally fine. Now, in this case, you have to choose between 5.1 and direct. For me, I'm normally always just outputting a direct output. I'm gonna be taking this, I'm gonna be flipping it over to a ProRes, flipping it over to a whatever, delivering it to a station like this. For me, I normally just stick with direct output. This is a personal preference. However you wanna to work to output, however many audio channels you have is entirely up to you. So what I normally do in this case is I do a save as, I call this DNX HD 175, okay? And I say, okay. Now, what I'm going to do, you'll see again, I'm just going to cancel. We'll right click, we'll say export. And I'm gonna ex export this to the desktop. We'll just call it master output, all right? Now, what I'm gonna do is make sure options, good, export, go. Now, the big question does, of course, come up. Why am I doing things this way? Well, you'll notice that QuickTime was not an option. And even if QuickTime was an option, I'm not going to use it. So why am I not going to use it? The reason I'm not going to use it is because 
It doesn't matter how sure your client thinks they are of however done they think their project is. They never are. You know this. I know this. You know they're going to call you on a Friday afternoon, 5 o'clock of a long weekend because they want to fix something. All right. So what I'm going to do is just hide Media Composer for one second. Oh, there we go. Media Encoder has finally appeared. Let's hide Media Encoder as well. I'm just going to reposition everything here and we'll just clean up the desktop. There we go. Very nice. And now that we have our clip exported to our desktop, I normally like to check it. Now, I'm a big fan of the Creative Cloud just because I use After Effects all the time. I use Photoshop. I use Media Encoder. And one tool that I love in there that not a lot of people use, especially I say editors, you know, a lot of editors I talk to don't use it. I'm just going to come down here and we're going to open this with other and I'm going to open it with Adobe Audition. I love Adobe Audition. I'm a huge, huge fan of it. So let's open with this. I'm just going to say open. And the reason I like to open it with Audition is because Audition will obviously show me all of the audio channels that have been exported with this clip. But more importantly, what it will also show me is the video as well. <laughs> So I can jump down to any point like right here, hit play on the keyboard and I can see all of my channels going at the same time and the video playing along with it. Now, let's circle back. All right, why did I want to export this as an MXF file even if I had the option to export it as a QuickTime file? Well, let me show you. I'm gonna Command or Alt and tab back in Avid Media Composer. Once I'm here, I've realized that this shot of the giraffe is not correct. All right, I actually need to export this actually flopped so he's walking the other way so i'm just going to call up the effects palette here i'm going to type in flop there's flop and we're going to flop it now this is not that big a deal on you know a 45 second long timeline however what if this timeline was like you know two hours long and what are you going to do sit through the entire export again no you're not what you're going to do is you're going to come back and you're actually going to mark the range that you'd like to re-export. Now remember, our giraffe was originally walking from left to right. Now he's walking from right to left. So what I'm going to do with this area marked is I'm going to right click and I'm going to come down to Insert, Edit, Export. Now it's going to ask me which clip do I want to export back to. And it's going to be my master output MXF file. Now it's important here that you didn't change any of the time code with your timeline or anything like that. Let's just go into the options and you'll see that we can, in this case, use marks, use selected tracks, include inactive audio tracks. You'll see there's all the information that we have about the clip that we're going to be exporting, compression, all that type of stuff. I'm gonna come down and say okay, and it's going to export the file. You'll see, boom, there we go. So now if I head back to the desktop, I right click on this file, I say open with, we come down to other, I'm going to come back to audition. Now remember that giraffe, we want to have it now walking from right to left instead of from left to right. Well, we're going to give audition a second to open up here. And once it does, we can jump down and see that that giraffe is now walking from the right side of the screen to the left side of the screen. And I didn't have to sit here for three hours waiting for my timeline to re-export. All right, so this is huge, 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 huge. And the main reason that I export as MX, well, it's not the main reason, but it's one of the main reasons I export as MXF files in case I ever have to get in and make an update. Now, with that being said, what I'm going to do is Command or Alt and Tab into Adobe's Media Encoder. I'm going to take that MXF file and drag it and drop it in here. One of the other tools that I use, and I'm not one normally that jumps in and says, oh, hey, you should buy this or you should buy that or you should buy the other thing. But one tool that I use probably more than any other tool in my editing toolkit is an extension for Media Encoder that is called After Codex. And what After Codex does is it brings support for ProRes H.264, H.265, and HAP Codex with excellent quality into Media Encoder for you to export as super quick and super simple. Now, if you're working with 2020 of Media Encoder and you are on Windows, you already have support for ProRes, but if you're working in a previous version and you don't have that support yet, because let's be honest, a lot of people don't want to update as soon as the new version comes out. They'll still be working a couple versions ago if that's working for them. This, it's $89 for Media Encoder. This $89 in Media, Compose, er, Media Encoder is probably the best 80 or 90 dollars that you will spend you'll notice that if you come in here i'm just going to click on match source if i come to the format you'll notice right up here i have one called appropriately enough after codex and here i can now choose what i want to export an mp4 or an mov file 
I can now come in. It's going to tell me there's a new version because I haven't updated it in a while. That's fine. But look at this. I can get in and choose whether I want to encode based on quality, bit rate, or even file size. If the client says I need this to be under 30 megabytes, no problem. I can actually get in and set that right here as well. Obviously, we then have the ability to come in and make whatever audio adjustments we want to based on the fact that in this case, this is a 5.1 clip. We can actually get in and select left, right, center, sub, left surround, and right surround and export a 5.1 MPEG-4 video file. All right. So this at its core, again, is my exporting workflow. And I'm not going to tell you that yours is wrong because to be honest, if it's working for you up till this point, you know, it's working for you. However, as Media Composer moves forward, we're moving away from those older way of doing things. Those, you know, trust me, I love QuickTime reference files, but they're slowly going the way of the Dodo. And this workflow here is a fantastic workflow, especially if you have clients that are uber picky at the last minute coming in and wanting to make changes. You can easily edit those changes into your final master file with a few clicks of the mouse. All right, now as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you to check out our sponsors, Video Guys, for all of your Avid software and hardware, as well as thousands of other products that you can check out over at videoguys.com. And I also want to give a big shout out to the team at Boris FX, makers of Continuum, Sapphire, and Mocha. And don't forget to use that coupon code of MC101 to get 10% off your next Continuum purchase. And I want to round out this lesson by letting you know that the awesome team at Assimilate has given you a coupon code for 10% off a of Scratch, Scratch VR, or Play Pro annual licenses using the coupon code of KPM Deal for you. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget, if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, don't hesitate to send them to me at Kevin P. McAuliffe at Gmail. Dot com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.